Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. Sitting alongside David this week is a TV presenter and family man whose youngest daughter should be talking any day now as soon as she can get a word in edgeways. <laughs> Jonathan Ross. David's other guest is an author and politician who, as well as being president of Snooker's governing body, got a blue at Oxford, although it did go in off the cushion. <laughs> Lord Archer. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is an American comedian who's just spent the last few weeks pretending to be David Letterman in a Hollywood film, as opposed to Jonathan Ross, who's pretended to be David Letterman for years. <laughs> Nick Henry. <laughs> We open the show by taking a pair of heartfelt and sincere explanations for sporting failure and holding them up to ridicule. Gary, Rory and Vic go first. Earlier this month, the Welsh Rugby Union team were minutes away from beating South Africa's Springboks for the first time in their history. And then this happened. The route, Van der Vesthuizen through. Van der Vesthuizen, who were then a few and then it's a try for Fenter. Fenter, the flank forward is the scorer. Wales ended up losing 28-20, but of course it wasn't their fault. So, Gary's team, whose fault was it? Well, Wales have invented this language, it doesn't exist. They only invent it to irritate English people. It's really? true, isn't it? You, know, you, you watch the Welsh news, it goes, What's right for what they're going to go to Switzerland? What's right for a nuclear reactor? It goes on like that, they go, What's right I think those English bastards have turned off now. <laughs> Uh, I know a lot about rugby, and it's completely obvious that uh, if those linebackers had come in and the safeties would have blitzed, they would have made the tackle and, uh, and ended the threat. Yeah. We love American football over here, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. It's we love a... foot and mouth as well. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed the mad cow disease. Yeah. <laughs> Must be going all evening. I know. <laughs> like an American football game. <laughs> <laughs> or a cricket match. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> What's Alabama like? Is that a bit like... Uh... Oh, they've got the family sort of like Cornwall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the families are very close, are they? They're very, very close. <laughs> the, fa the, fa the family trees don't fork. Yeah. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh. It must be confusing being from Alabama, seeing all these bright lights and not having a hood over your head. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, that's your now. That's now. Thank you. Do you know much about sort of English sport? English sport? Yeah. I know cricket is thrilling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only if you've dropped acid beforehand. <laughs> well, David, have you ever dropped common, acid? That's common practice. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've dropped, dropped plenty of, of other people. people. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I was watching a highlight reel yesterday to sort of get acclimated, and he, it was from 87, and, uh, my, no, it was from 87, and it looks nothing, he was blonde what and fit, and, what's happened to you? It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the way I can stand it. I hate the butt but I've got a f***ing babysitter leaving soon, do you mind if we get on the I'm really, I'm not, honestly. I mean, That's know, right. I've always wanted yes, to know, I, where do you get a f***ing babysitter from? Because I'm yeah. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's say, you always like to be home to give the babysitter a lift, don't you, John? <laughs> <laughs> I think... Was it something to do with a pitch invasion? Yes, it was. Gaswell. It was like a sheep with no clothes streaker, wasn't it? It was sort of to do that. Yeah, I'll give you three points. Wales's coach, Graham Henry, blamed the defeat mm. on a streaker. Henry said, the streaker broke our concentration. The fool with no clothes on has a lot to answer for. The guy cannot be Welsh. He is an idiot who should be shot. <laughs> and here is BBC Sport's desperate attempt to avoid showing that streaker. Kind of cold to be running about. And here's what they were trying to avoid showing you. <laughs> Who says we don't cater for women on this show? There you go. Actually, to be fair, the BBC did want to show film of the streaker, but just before he ran on, they were outbid for the rights by Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, a streaker at the Yankee Stadium in New York was jailed for three months because he'd written abuse and did it for mayor across his bottom. Thank heavens we don't have that law in this country. Darling, <laughs> 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 <I'll leave it. laughs> OK, David, Jonathan and Geoffrey, your subject is Aston Villa in England's Paul Merson. Here is the much-travelled Merson scoring for his former team, Middlesbrough, against another old club, Arsenal, in the FA Cup last season. And through the middle goes Merson, and the goalkeeper's committed himself very rashly. Paul Merson, surely for Middlesbrough. And he's scored against his old club. Now, with this season only a few weeks old, Paul Merson abruptly decided to walk out of Middlesbrough, and what we want to know is, what was his excuse for leaving the North East club? 
I didn't realize you'd need an excuse to leave Middlesbrough. <laughs> Especially to go to Birmingham. It's more of London you're going for, isn't it? <laughs> Just as well, I feel. Is, is being mayor of London kind of like being Boss Hogg on the Dukes of Hazzard? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He's on, he's on a joint ticket with Roscoe P. Coltrane. <laughs> exactly. I'd win if I was. Exactly. was he, he was unhappy because he found out Middlesbrough could score from like, anywhere on the pitch, couldn't he? And they were scoring dope and they were scoring smack. And they were... <laughs> that's what it was. Though. Didn't he say that culturally they were, they were the wrong people? bad influences around him. Yeah, but I'll give you three points for that. The official answer, at least, is that he left to avoid all the booze and gambling at Middlesbrough. And who better to explain than Paul himself? I always use the phrase, if you're going in hairdressers for seven days on the truck, at the end of the week you're going to have an haircut and, you know, if you're always around betting, even though it's not big betting and all that, if you keep being around it, you're going to have a bet. Must be a hell of a queue at these hairdressers, must it? <laughs> Middlesbrough's most famous centre forward was, of course, Brian Clough, who still to this day holds many of the club records, including whiskey, vodka and creme de menthe. <laughs> Brazilian star Emerson once stormed out of a Middlesbrough training session saying, I'm not a horse, which was bad news for Paul Merson, who put a hundred quid on him. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. <laughs> Our next round is Sporting Bluff, where the teams have to sort out fact from fiction. Each team member reads out a statement, the other team have to guess which fact is true, and which two are about as believable as the plot of a Geoffrey Archer novel. Hey! <laughs> Gary's team, your subject is the Tartan Army themselves, Scotland's Commonwealth Games team. Here they are, decked out in their kilts at the opening ceremony in Kuala Lumpur earlier this year. Yes. And Walker, the fag bearer, wearing his kilt. All the men, in fact, in kilts. But the Scottish athletes were bearing their legs in defiance of their own authorities, who had warned them not to wear kilts. So, David's team, what reason did the Scottish officials give for this controversial advice? The Scottish athletes were advised not to wear kilts because the wearing of skirts by men contravenes Malaysian Islamic law. Not? <laughs> Are you going to believe the politician or the other two? <laughs> a lovely reading voice, Jeffrey. It's very kind of you. Yeah. Lovely. It's very charming. I think I'd rather have you reading than writing any day. Really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke, sir. <laughs> Scottish athletes were advised not to wear kilts in case they billowed up in the wind, causing offence to the spectators. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan? Scottish athletes were advised not to wear kilts in case mosquitoes flew up inside and bit their genitalia. <laughs> So, Gary's team, who do you think is telling the truth? Mm. Hey, Rick, what do y'all think about men wearing skirts in Alabama? I think if they showed up in Alabama, they'd be hearing, you got a pretty mile. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all lady boys. <laughs> Might get picked up by Jonathan. <laughs> Rumour has it. Listen, I you keep your sordid fantasies about me to yourself. <laughs> I told you before when you tried to attach me to the shower, and I'm telling you again, I'm not your bitch. <laughs> You're not in Japan now. It's not acceptable here at the BBC. <laughs> you come down here with your Schofield tan. <laughs> we, uh, I've got the measure of you. We started in on his hey, tan. I'm only trying to get him involved hey, in this Yankee show. Doodle, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got playing there. I suspect you have no work papers. Now, Vic, how do you recover from a put-down like Yankee Doodle? Well, I'm not Yankee Doodle, he's an idiot. Yeah, you're... <laughs> I may be an idiot, yeah. but I'm proud yeah, to be a British idiot. <laughs> They're quite strict in Malaysia, aren't they? They're very strict um, in Kuala Lumpur, KL. What we call it in East Anglia, King's Lynn. <laughs> They're very strict Islamic, they have very strict drug laws. Like, if, you ever, if you've ever been to Kuala Lumpur Airport, uh, as you arrive, they have this big sign saying, the punishment for drug dealing is death. It's very scary. I mean, I shot two kilos of cannabis, I was so <laughs> <laughs> In fact, oh, no, no. <laughs> what, about, what about the mosquito thing? Well, you think two mosquitoes said, fancy McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> or rather a Whopper. <laughs> or a quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> or some McNuggets. <laughs> 
Come on, get on with it before we get on to fillet o fish. I can see some disadvantage of being an athlete, a Scottish athlete wearing a kilt, especially in something like the relay race, you know. When you're... <laughs> <laughs> let go, let go, let go. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the happiest losers in all of sport. <laughs> I'll go with the politician. Jeffrey wouldn't lie, would he? So you think it Never. was against Islamic law? You thought Jeffrey was telling the truth? Let's have a look. Have, yep. you, have you ever Hilarious. been bitten on the balls by a mosquito? <laughs> yes. Because I have, and it took two days of lying in the sun with honey spread all over. But when it happened, <laughs> the best night of my life. <laughs> I tell you, I recommend the most to Annie. Hey. David Steen. <laughs> Your subject is Her Majesty the Queen. Here are some of her loyal subjects giving their all for Queen and Country in the summer of 1998. One or two disagreements, and Campbell! No, the referee has ruled it out. And Mark of a steam on Frankie Dottori. He completes a fantastic treble. Frankie Mark of a steam has run in from Bosworth Sham. Game separate. First game, So, Gary's team. The Queen was said to be not amused when Saul Campbell's late goal against Argentina was disallowed. Gary? <laughs> the Queen was said to be not amused when Frankie de Tori was suspended while riding in the royal colours at Goodwood for overuse of the whip. The Queen was said to be not amused when Tim Henman was beaten in the Wimbledon semi-final by Pete Sampras. So, David Steen, was Her Majesty pissed off at Sol Campbell's disallowed winner, <laughs> at Frankie de Tori's whipping disqualification, or at Tim Henman's dismissal? The Queen, I, I believe she was not amused by England's defeat, but I believe she found the, uh, the uh, Scottish result against Morocco. They left 3-0. She pissed herself at that one. <laughs> come on, Geoffrey, come I on. We so. haven't heard from much from you. Don't use any thinking time. Imagine you're writing a book. Just straight in there. <laughs> Before I decide which one of the three, can I ask Vic a question? And it's about the World Cup, because you have in the United States the World Series. Yes, we do. Which I'm absolutely fascinated by, but as no one else in the world is allowed to enter except for America. Well... How can it possibly be the World Series? The same way it's the World Cup. The Every World Cup has 174 nations in right, it to begin with. Right, but not the United States. The United States... Yes, the United States is in the World really? Cup. Really? Yes, you I didn't... I had no idea. Just because you didn't do very well. <laughs> Why is there only because one country in the world because series. Because we would kick the piss out of the Japanese if right. we played them. <laughs> you would know this. You know the Queen, don't you? Jeffrey always ran, don't you? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. One pitch, Corgi, I've blah, been... blah, blah. Thatcher, nuts. Yes, she was. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Blair, got him in my pocket. Blah, blah, blah. Why don't be the mayor? Give us the hat and the... Why do you want to be mayor anyway? That's no job for an adult, is it, really? <laughs> I can get us three points if you let me. Well, if no, you know. nothing. If you... <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeff, Vic. Mister. You think Vic? Right Let's see one. if you're right. This was the sole camp, yeah. Yeah. Bye, Jingo. Well, I said you knew. Well, I, I knew you knew. Yes, the Queen watched the Argentina match on television and was apparently sick as a swan when Sol Campbell's goal was chalked <laughs> off. As well as being disappointed by England's defeat, the Queen was also upset to see Scotland eliminated and was, of course, completely gutted when Germany went out. <laughs> the story was part of a campaign to modernise the Queen's image by associating her with sport. She cheered for England in the World Cup, signed a Manchester United football and, without wishing to give anything away, I'd be very careful where you put your hands during Feel the Sportsman. <laughs> team have three points and David's team have six. Lucky. A letter here from the son from Audrey Gilbert of Gillingham in Dorset. Gary Lineker is both interesting and informative on BBC One's Football Focus, but why does he always look like he's wearing someone else's clothes? <laughs> Audrey, that's ridiculous and patently unfair. Gary Lineker is neither interesting nor informative. <laughs> In the 
this next round, <laughs> in this next round, we play some strange bits of sporting footage and ask the inevitable question, what's going on? Gary's team, cast your eyes on this. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> So, Gary's team, what sport do we think we're watching there? You don't often see a bloke in a dyke, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was actually someone cleaning out David's moat. <laughs> in Alabama, that's looking for a date. <laughs> Is that the only sport left on BBC One next year? <laughs> I know this is um, a Welsh sport, isn't it? I have no idea. Well, it looks like it, it, it's, uh, it's bog snorkeling. Whoa! Whoa. Bog snorkeling. Yeah. We would call it swamp snorkeling, but it's bog, bog snorkeling. snorkeling. Yeah. Have that in America? Uh, yes, of course. Is that your official answer? Yeah. Absolutely right. I give you, give you three points for that. Yeah, what you were watching. <laughs> I did know that. <laughs> What you're watching there were the very best moments from the 1998 World Bog Snorkeling Championships, held every August in a peat bog in Lantred Wells, and won this year by lifeguard Craig Knapper. Most of the hundred or so spectators at the championships were local people, although when he heard there was an event involving a couple of lengths in a bog, George Michael turned up as well. <laughs> David's team, it's cricket for you, but what on earth could be going on here? Yeah. Is, that, is that some women getting ready for a night out with Jeff Boycott? Just getting in train? <laughs> Unfair. Actually, I, I think he's innocent, you know. He? Well, because he's meant to have hit her something like 20 times, isn't he? Mm. And that would have taken at least two or three weeks. So. <laughs> 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 yeah. And no one was run out. <laughs> if you listen to the music, which is so awful, I think they're complaining about the noise of the music in the flat below. In the flat in the below, yeah. You live in a flat, you don't in you? A flat? Yeah. yeah. You've got any problem with the heating? I know a bloke Mick who works in town. How heating? <laughs> Do you look after him? Yes. What day did you do your bins, Geoffrey? What? What day did you do your bins? <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, it'd be every day when you're Lord Mayor, wouldn't it, mate? <laughs> so, back to cricket. <laughs> Is that Phil Tufnell's bedroom? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you tell me, David. <laughs> it's close. It's got to be close, isn't it? They were showing socks. Close-ups of socks. What else do you see close-ups of socks? Apart from in the very specialist movies. <laughs> 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 no, no, uh, they'll be launching, must be next year's World Cup, something like that. Absolutely correct, yes, I'll give you three points for that. Oh, that was... That was, in fact, the launch of next year's Cricket World Cup, that little dance signifying that it's going to be a carnival of cricket. The World Cup will take place in this country next summer and will feature all seven big cricketing nations, of which the top six will go through into the Super Six final. Oh dear. <laughs> Regrettably, England batsman John Crawley was attacked the other day by four youths while on tour in Australia. Instinctively, he applied his England training, swung wildly a couple of times, decided it wasn't worth fighting back, and collapsed. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine. Yeah. It's time for the teams to do a Ron Davis now and fumble with a complete stranger in the dark in Field of Sportsmen. <laughs> David and Jonathan, if you'd like to go up first and take your positions. Yeah. Okay, and can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, and your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 
that's a stupid oh. thing. What's in? What's going on? Oh. <laughs> what? So how's that done? A little bit off the back. Off the <laughs> Make sure you hold this thing up. Oi! What? Oi! What? 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 Well done. Yeah, thank, thank you. <laughs> well, clever. Man, yeah, feel the size of that. Look at that there. Hey, nothing well, there, uh, nothing up there. How long have we got time? <laughs> Do, uh, <laughs> Do you know what you... <laughs> Jonathan, did you pull some of that powder? I'll tell you what. Um, I don't, I don't know what he is, but he likes me doing this, don't you? Cheeky little monkey. You like it? Thank you, Jonathan. Hey, you like it? Yeah, yeah. Well, Oh, yeah. He's off. I've upset you now. Oh. Okay. Oh, very, very David bad luck. It was, in fact, the David Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> 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 what are you doing down there? Hey, David. What's happening? <laughs> It's overweighted, that game. <laughs> My mate Ginger Tony can bench press a house. <laughs> Paul Murphy been in. <laughs> OK. Go in, Rory. Can you take your positions, please? <clears throat> My hand smells really sweaty now. How about I explain that to my wife when I get home? <laughs> You've been touching up weightlifters again. <laughs> And can we have our second mystery guest, please? to use your tongues on this one. <laughs> Start now. Don't go near it. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Right. I'm feel a lot better. <laughs> Boris, it's like being at Frank Boff's New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Covered in rubber. It's not, is it the gimp from Pulp Fiction? <laughs> <laughs> it's got yeah. something long and hard sticking out of its mouth. <laughs> oh, it's Bill Clinton. <laughs> Got out the wrong way round. Is it Alan Hansen? <laughs> oh, that's not out yet, is it? That is. <laughs> is it that, um, that dog snorkeling bloke? Yeah, I need there. his name. Hope I did so. say Craig, it very loud. Very good, Craig Napper. Well done. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Craig. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Very much. That was very good. Yeah. Neither no, informative no. or what was it? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. Sit down. I've wanted to do this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> 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 David's team have nine points, and Gary's team have nine points. Ooh. We finish as ever with our bog snorkeling mosquito biting name game. The scores are level, so Gary's team goes first. If you could pass those along to Rory, please, Vic. And your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> um, he pulls rabbits out of hats. Yeah, Magician. Magic Johnson. Yeah, very good. Um, named after a state, capital is Helena. Montana, Joe Montana. Very good. Oh, He's a good looking girl. Um, baseball player. Good looking girl is a. Babe, Babe Ruth. Very good. Okay. Um, <laughs> this ice hockey player, his first name is one of these. Wink. Mike. Yeah, and, and he's very strict and very, like, the sort of governor. Very. Very. Mike boss. Yeah, but adjective. Mike Barsi. Oh, very good. Uh, another state, capital, St. Paul. Uh, Minnesota. Minneapolis. Not, not, not Minnesota. Minnesota fats. fats. Very good. 
Um, um, <laughs> his American footballer, his, his double barrel it's name, the first 144 is Gross. 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 Michael Gross? No. No, no, no. Uh, second bit of his name is what you do with a football to another player. No, He's not a, Gary. No. Use the opposition. <laughs> Stick you, it in the back of the no, neck. No, no, pass it. Pass, yeah. Gross pass. Gross pass. And first name, Rock. Greek bread. Stone. Greek bread. Peter. Greek, Peter. Peter. Peter Gross. Peter Gross. Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone played this character. Rocky. Rocky. No, no. Rocky other, Balboa. other, you know, machine uh, gun. Rambo. Rambo, yeah. First name, same name as... Um, John Rambo. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, this is a golfer whose second name is a form of music, syncopated jazz, a bit bluesy. Funk. Oh, Fred Funk. Fred, Fred Funk. Funk. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, second name, they make sausages. And they made Walkers. a brick. They made a brick, <laughs> not the sausages. Oh. Very good. <laughs> okay, so David's team needs nine points to win. If you pass the envelope along, please. I'm sure you'll have no trouble doing that. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you have 90 seconds to guess as many names as you can, and your time starts. Now, um, she had, it's a tennis girl, very pretty girl, blonde. She was unseeded. I'm no, sure some lucky buggers got to her since then. That's right, well done. You. <laughs> uh, he's uh, got the first bit you've got, the Ponzi bit that we don't talk about, and he's uh, Lord. Yep, and he, uh, he's like a big eagle. You can see, and he sweeps down. Okay. He picks up a cricket player, and he takes him up to his lair, and he whips him <laughs> limb from limb. <laughs> like a big bird, but not an eagle. Another one. Hawk, Lord Hawk. Yes, Hawk. Yes, Lord Hawk, Captain. Of no, you're confused. Oh, you're yes, dozy. Here we go. Um, <laughs> it's like the other team in Liverpool, but it isn't the team with Liverpool in the neighbourhood. Yeah, Everton. and the first name's a really boring bloke. You like, you might make a car one of your electric Blind. batteries. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Uh, billiards. Play. What's billiards? Oh, you'll do billiards. Don't get this. Well, don't guess first. I've got to do something. This is Benny Billiards. Come on, come on, come on. His name, it, uh, it's a very common name, a very common Davis. name. Yeah, well, that's it. And Fred. Yeah, well done. <laughs> You'll be mayor, I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, are you free? Are you free? John are you free in Australia? <laughs> are you free in Australia? John Inman, what is this? Just Australia? Not Sydney? Oh, no. <laughs> Melbourne. Yeah, go rock with me, will ya? This bloke, named after a hedgehog, went very fast. Second name, possibly a chicken dish in a restaurant. I don't know, I've never heard of him. Hedgehog, bing, bing, get the rings, go on, make that now. Who wants to play there? Come on! Come on, little hedgehog bloke, cheeky little fella, not Nintendo. Whoa, there he goes, three, they whack, they get a ring. Come on! There's a whole audience here, mate, these cheers. <laughs> it was a great clue, Jonathan, but you're dreaming if you think either Lord Archer or David Gower are going to go, is it Sonic? <laughs> so, David's team have 14, but the winners this week are Gary's team with 17. Thanks to David, Jonathan and Geoffrey, Gary, Rory and Vic. We're all off to vote for Ken Livingston. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Next up tonight on BBC One, Paul Whitehouse and Tony Curtis. All talk with Clive...